first of all, what plan are you wearing? Uh, this is my Sinclair tartan. I, uh, I'm uh, uh, proud to wear my grandfather James's uh, tartan. I also have an Elliot kilt, but it's blue, so I tend to prefer the red these days for <laughs> obvious political reasons. Justin Trudeau is very proud of his Sinclair heritage. But what I found out about the Sinclair bloodline truly shocked me. Here is the Sinclair family crest. Notice the rooster. The rooster is a Knights Templar symbol. And his family was very involved in the Knights Templar. You wouldn't believe how much, but I'll get there. I wanted to show you Justin's fashion show first of his kilts. He really likes wearing them. In fact, when he was a teacher, he would wear them when he taught the little kids. He didn't sit quite appropriately with a skirt on. You're not supposed to sit with your legs apart like that. And here he is in high school with his athlete buddies, but he's the only one wearing a kilt. Notice what he's wearing around his waist. That is called a sporan. And also notice the three rabbit's feet. The lucky rabbit's foot is actually not lucky at all. It's witchcraft. They commonly believed that witches could shapeshift into rabbits or other animals. And the pagans thought that a lucky rabbit's foot was actually cut from a shapeshifted witch. As far as why there's three of them, that goes back into ancient paganism. But I don't have time to get into that. Now let's go down the rabbit trail, shall we? So let's just jump right in. I'll have Justin introduce his grandfather, James Sinclair. Another great Scot, my grandfather, Jimmy Sinclair. He was born in Banffshire, and as family lore had it, his father, my great-grandfather, James George Sinclair, who was a local school teacher, was also a passionate fisherman. And unfortunately, back then, there were rules around who could fish in which streams. And about the fourth or fifth time, the local constable caught him and threatened to throw him in jail if he caught him once again fishing in the Laird's stream. Um, as family lore has it, my grandfather says, but my great-grandfather said, but if I cannot fish, I cannot live. <laughs> so he went home, unrolled his you know, schoolhouse maps, looked at a big map of Canada, pointed to a spot on the west coast of the country, says, there, British Columbia, where we can be free and no man owns the fish. <laughs> so he packed up his belongings, his family, including his two-year-old son, Jimmy, and they moved to BC. And surprise, surprise, James Sinclair was also awarded the Rhodes Scholarship, which is funded by none other than Lord Rothschild. Some other Rhodes Scholars recipients that you might recognize are Bill Clinton and Christia Freeland. They have gone on to be some of the most powerful and influential people, and they advocate and fund various global schemes and propaganda to undermine national sovereignty and promote a one-world government. In 1446, to honor the Knights Templar, Sir William Sinclair, 1st Earl of Cathnus, started the construction of Frostland Chapel. His son, the second Earl, spent most of his finances completing the construction of the chapel in 1486. Some legends claim it has links with secretive organizations such as the Freemasons or the Knights Templar. It contains Knights of Templar imagery throughout and has several crypts. It's filled with Celtic pagan symbols and even has images that pay homage to death. It has an altar that's held up by eight snakes called the Ouroboros. That's snakes that eat their tail. 
Ouroboros, the serpent eating its own tail, and the symbol of death and rebirth and the cyclical aeons of the cosmos according to all the hidden mysteries. But according to other researchers of the ancients, there's a major connection between the Ouroboros and the Milky Way galaxy, and that connects largely to the biblical mention of Leviathan, the sea serpent monster things. The sea serpent Leviathan, which is called the dragon that is in the sea, which, by the way, God eventually slays. And could there be a connection here to the beast that rises out of the sea in Bible prophecy in Revelation 13? Wow. Sir William Sinclair also introduced Enochian magic to Scotland which is the practice of Satanism within the Illuminati. Freemasonry was founded later in 1736 by another Sir William Sinclair of Rosslyn, who became hereditary Grand Master Mason of Scotland. I encourage you to go to the KnightsTemplarOrder.org website and see how the Templars morphed into Freemasonry. Just think about it. Isn't that something? Justin Trudeau's relatives actually created Freemasonry. Just wait till you hear how they had a hand in creating the Knights Templar as well, which came years earlier. Here's a picture of the gravestone of William Sinclair. It clearly has engraved on it, Knight Templar. And this isn't just a myth or a legend. This is written in stone. And this is located right inside Rosalind Chapel. According to historians, the Sinclairs and their French relatives, the St. Clairs, were instrumental in creating the Knights Templar, and they were themselves among the early members of this order. Henry Sinclair fought in the First Crusade in the Holy Land, where he met and fought alongside... de Payence. I'm sorry, but I can't pronounce French words to save my life, so I have to use the internet to pronounce it for me. De a powerful broker of the First Crusade who had the political power to nominate the Pope and also helped to form the Knights Templar. By 1303, the Knights Templar had lost their hold on the Holy Land and established their base in Paris, France. In 1307, King Philip IV of France ordered the arrest and the mass execution of the Knights Templar. They were charged with heresy, homosexuality, financial corruption, black magic, devil worshipping, fraud, spitting on the cross, and more. By 1312, Pope Clement V dissolved the Knights Templar in what many believe to be a power struggle for greed and control. Now you're going to find this interesting. During the Templar trials, members of the order described how initiates were required to perform bizarre sexual rites bestowing obscene kisses on the bodies of senior members. They confessed to spitting and trampling on the cross and denying the divinity of Jesus. The accusations have been leveled at the Templars are extremely lured, and I've always attracted, for that reason, a great deal of attention. But they are there in black and white in the trial depositions, so we have to address them and assess them. But most shocking of all was the testimony that the Templars worshipped a sinister bearded head. In the trials, the head was described in various different ways. Sometimes they said it had two heads. Sometimes brothers described it as having four feet. Some said it was made of silver. Some said it was made of gold. It was rumored to be the preserved head of the first Templar Grand Master, Hugh de Payen. It was also described as a two-faced skull or the head of an animal. Some mentioned a weird idol known as Baphomet. It's possible the word Baphomet was a corrupted pronunciation of Mohammed. If so, some have suggested this is evidence that the Templars were secret converts to Islam. This totally explains these pictures of Justin Trudeau. Another Henry Sinclair, later on, welcomed the Templars fleeing persecution 
and gave them sanctuary in Scotland. In return, the Knights Templar assisted Robert the Bruce and his Scottish Knights to achieve independence from England. To commemorate that victory in Scottish history, Robert the Bruce and William Sinclair created the Brothers of the Rosy Cross, Rosicrucianism. Scotland's first Masonic order with Robert the Bruce as its first Grand Master. The Rosicrucians claim their order has been in existence since the days of ancient Egyptians with secret teachings and occult symbols. Examples are the rose, the cross, and the sw in the pyramid. Its initiates are called the Illuminati. I laid down all that background information in 10 minutes time just so I could explain my previous video. Now here's where we get into the really deep stuff. Let's go back to the Rosslyn Chapel. Did you know it sits in a town called Rosslyn? And did you know it could be spelled either way? And the word Rosslyn means rose line. Now, the Rose Line is the Merovingian bloodline. The reason they chose the Rose is because they think it's a symbol of perfection. And for other reasons. The Merovingians are royal bloodline families that claim to have descended from Christ. They falsely claim that Jesus had an affair with Mary Magdalene and had children and that they are descendants of Jesus, which is a really fabricated story with no proof. But your name was never Sonier. It's St. Clair. It's one of the oldest families in France. It's from the line of the Merovingian kings. Royal blood. And they also claim to be related to Lucifer. A prominent family of the Merovingian bloodline is the Sinclair family. The Sinclairs originally came from Normandy, France, to England with William the Conqueror in 1066. On Christmas in 1066. Duke William becomes King William I. William the Conqueror. Before settling in Scotland, the family dates back to the Viking Age and the first ruler of Normandy, whose name was Rollo. His name is Rollo. He's Ragnar Lothbrok's brother. His name is Rollo. He is the brother of King Ragnar, the leader of the Northmen. He is a famous warrior. He lived between 860 and 932. He was the great, great, great grandfather of William I of England and the 32nd great grandfather of Queen Elizabeth II. The Sinclair family history is closely connected to the crowns of France, England, and Scotland. The Merovingian bloodline is one of the most diabolical. Fritz Springmeier has written a book called Bloodlines of the Illuminati. The Merovingians are number 13 on the list. Some people think a world monarch or an antichrist will be chosen from this line. This bloodline believes that it has the blood of Jesus and the blood of Satan in its bloodline. Because some of these bloodlines are genetically intertwined, the Rothschild bloodline also has members that belong to the 13th bloodline. British royalty are tied to this bloodline, as are many American political leaders, such as George Washington, George Bush, Bill Clinton, etc. They also are collectively referred to as the Black Nobility that's dominated by the British crown of 10,000 genetically related individuals of the royal houses of Europe from Italy to Germany to London. They belong to a secret order called the Knights of Malta, which swears allegiance to the Pope, and they all have diplomatic immunity, allowing them to ship goods across borders without going through customs or paying duty. 
These families, along with their offspring and lackeys, are responsible for numerous secret societies, lodges, and organizations. And they all work under the central command of the Rothschilds funded Bavarian Illuminati, which is a secret society founded in 1776 in Bavaria, Germany, which binds them all together through a Vatican Jesuit establishment. Now that I have explained all that, I would like to go back further in time. But first, I'd like you to hear a few words by Fritz Springmeier. Well, when I started working with these people that had been members in the Illuminati, that's, that's the term they used. It was their term. It's not my term. I'm just reporting to you what, I've, what I found out, you know, what I've learned. Um, and that's their term. Now, why do they use that term? It's because they believe that they have been illuminated to divinity. So if we go way back and look at these powerful bloodlines, like Nimrod, the pharaohs, the Caesars, what were they? They were considered gods, and they still consider themselves gods. These powerful bloodlines, they, they went underground, they're lower key, but they're still with us. They never left us. Now let's just set aside all the genealogy charts for a moment and explore this issue. Why do they think they're gods? Is there anything to this? I came across something very interesting. And listen to this. Now, a new DNA study reveals that Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten, or Amenhotep IV, was a human-alien hybrid. Now, you might think this is crazy until you understand that a scientific team in Switzerland pretty much did a gene print a massive gene print on the different pharaohs, and one of them came up with an alien hybrid DNA because they could compare normal human DNA. Now let's put some clues together. Remember how the Sinclairs, with the help of Robert the Bruce, put together the Rosicrucian Order? Well, let's look at some of the teachings of the Rosicrucian Order. It'll explain a lot. The simplest explanation of what the Rosicrucian Order is that we're a philosophical and educational organization. We certainly can trace our historical lineage back several hundred years, but then traditionally we also go back through, say, like the alchemists, the medieval mystics, back to the mystery schools of ancient Greece and Egypt. So this is called the primordial tradition sort of like the underground stream of human uh, spirituality. And we are a modern manifestation of that and historically connected to it. So it's really thousands of years old. The Rosicrucian order can be traced back historically to the 1600s when three Rosicrucian manifestos were published anonymously in Europe. However, they were perpetuating much older traditions dating back to the mystery schools of ancient Egypt, the Essenes, the mysteries in Greece, such as the Delphic mysteries and Eleusis, Kabbalah, alchemy. So even though the Rosicrucian tradition was announced in the early 1600s, it was uh, perpetuating something much older. Well, mysticism is the practice by which one has a direct connection to the divine, however you conceive the divine to be, without intervention of priest or king or anybody else. So it actually is connected to the ancient mystery schools, which is ultimately the source of the Rosicrucian tradition. So a mystery, in the sense of mystery school, is not a whodunit. It's an occasion where one encounters uh, the divine. For me, mysticism means that one has a direct understanding, a communication, engagement with the divine or God or, or whatever term one uses for that great spirit. The Rosicrucian Order is a worldwide order of mystics. The Illuminati fascination with the pyramids is starting to make sense now. I have another video on my site that explores the pyramids that you might want to check out. I know it's about John Darby, so if you're not interested in him, just go about halfway through and you'll get to the information about the pyramids. If you want to hear more about what Steve Quayle has to say about his excavation in Mexico, I really suggest you watch that video. 
So I'm thinking about exploring the Kabbalah connections in my next video, especially since I found this picture of Justin Trudeau. He is making a Kabbalah hand sign. So please subscribe, and also you might be interested in my backup BitChute channel. Thank you for watching.